everyone. Today I wanted to code uh, online softmax. So the advantage of online softmax, as we'll see, is we can improve the performance of what we wrote earlier, which is the naive softmax. And this is a performance based on algorithmic improvement. Uh, I believe the original motivation for online softmax was simply to be able to perform softmax both more efficiently, but also in a way where uh, if you had streaming data coming in. Uh, but um, Regardless, what we're going to see here is that we can reduce the number of passes across the row uh, by almost 2.5x, and we'll get a resulting performance improvement from that with the exact same results. So let's just take a quick look at our na na excuse me, naive softmax we wrote last time. And if we look at, just pretend we're just going to focus on one row here, but uh, as we process the row, uh, what's going to happen here? We first take the max of this row, so there's one pass through the row, then we need to subtract the max from all of the uh, current items in the row to get our safe uh, row, so to speak, but that's another pass through the row. So now we're two passes through the row. Our third pass through the row is going to be we're going to exponentiate every single item in that row, so that's third pass. Finally, uh, denominator uh, is going to be um, created by taking the sum of the numerator, so that's another pass because we have to aggregate all every item in the row, so we're up to four passes now. Finally, our fifth pass is going to be the actual softmax uh, scores or uh, JITs, probabilities really, uh, output, and that's numerator divided by denominator. So <laughs> we have here five uh, passes through any given row to compute our softmax. So now what we're going to do is we'll code up an online version of the softmax, and we'll see that we can do it in two passes. So let's get that uh, underway. Let me get this going here. So online softmax. And just as before, torch tensor oops, coming in, torch tensor coming out. So the result inputs and outputs are all the same. It's just algorithmically we're going to improve it. And online. Faster than eager. Okay, so uh, once the X comes in, somewhat akin to some of the things we have to do in the uh, Triton version uh, of the softmax we wrote earlier, we do need to understand the shape of this uh, particular tensor. So let's get um, rows count and calls count. Oops. Shrink this call count. And this is X dot shape. Um, I guess we'll just do a quick insert. Um, X dot dam equals two. Okay, probably don't really need that, but anyway, just for good practice. Uh, so we know our row count, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start looping through the, every individual row, and then we're going to, have to loop uh, once, uh, really twice, uh, through every single item in the column. So we'll set up two loops here. So for R in range. Count. This is our outer loop. <laughs> for each row, we have to track two uh, meta statistics here. Uh, the first one is uh, our current max. So let's just call that row max. Initialize this to zero. And then we have an additional term, which is our normalizing term. So let's just call that normalizer. Also set that to zero. And for reference and flash attention, they do use online softmax. And what they refer to the max is uh, M, and this is L. And they talk about the meta statistics that they track. So that's exactly what is going on there. Uh, so row max normalizer, <clears throat> and now we can proceed to walk every item in the column of this particular row. So for C in range, uh, call count. Let's get our actual item, and that's going to be off the X and R comes C. Close the item, and I just realized we forgot to do something important up here um, after the assert. We uh, kind of in similar to how we do things in Triton, we need to actually make our output result buffer. So let's just call this output and we're gonna set, we just need a matching size of zeros like our input. This is what we're gonna, what we're going to write out to. Um, right, so this gives us the current. Now we need to take a look at this current and see if it exceeds our row max. So let's just call this, uh, Going to save the old max if we update it, which you'll see in a minute what we do with that. But uh, prep old max equals row max. Now we can say row max equals max, row 
max or uh, per. So is our current item larger? Um, just so we can see what's happening, because uh, we'll, we'll run our basic sample of one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Let's do a print here. So uh, if low max greater than treble max print updated low max. Uh, row max. And just the row number just so we can track it. So this is, uh, we'll remove this uh, um, <clears throat> ultimately, but that's just more so we can kind of see how things progress when we run it uh, through our sample. Um, so once we have this updated max, we can uh, update our normalizing term. And this is really what we're gonna do uh, for the first pass. So normalizer is going to equal normalizer times torch dot exponentiation and now we're going to subtract the difference if there is any if it's not it'll just fall away and become nothing but uh, if we do have a difference so we're going to say preble max minus um, row max and then we need to add another exponentiation and that's going to be uh, per minus row max so this is how we generate our normalizing term, and this gets progressively upgraded, updated as we uh, progress across the entire row. Once we're done with the row, we have a normalizing term, and then we just need one more pass, which is to basically just compute the softmax. And so that's going to say that um, output for this row is going to equal uh, torch. We need to exponentiate our row value here. So that is going to be x at the row every item minus our row max. This is effectively doing the safe max here, kind of on the fly. And then we divide by our normalizing term. And now we have an updated row or a soft max output for that row. And then we loop through all the consecutive rows until we're done. And at this point, output. All right, I think that should work. So let's give it a whirl. Um, and to reference, I, okay, so first let's check our results. Well, actually move back up. I already, just to save time on the video, I went ahead and uh, pre-computed uh, some simple unit testing here or prepped up. So basically we're going to use our old or familiar term, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, uh, t-type torch float 32, we're doing on CUDA. Um, I turned off the performance count, but we'll take a look at this in a second. But basically we're going to compare uh, three things here. So our original softmax we cut up before, just the eager, naive softmax, generic, safe softmax. And then the second thing we're going to do here, let's see, eager. And then we have our online, the one we just wrote, pass in the sample. And then finally we have our reference architecture, which is just torch.softmax uh, sample and not the row dimension. And we're going to print all three eager out, on the out, reference out. So let's take a look. Um, so first of all, we, we kept our little stats in here. Updated row max is now one, two, three, four, five. That's what we expect because, as you recall, it's one, two, three, four, five. In the second row, it's a little bit different because our first, our max is in fact the first item, and that's never updated. So it's just uh, now row one. Uh, sorry, row five. Um, yeah, value of <laughs> value of five in row one. So let's take a look at our results. Zero, one, one, seven up to six, three, six, four, six, three, six, four back down. 0, 6, 2, 6, 4, 6, 2, 4, 4, 4, 10. And finally, uh, reference architecture, same thing. So we're generating exactly the same thing in uh, three different ways in this sense, uh, in terms of Torch implementation, our eager uh, implementation, and now the online softmax implementation. So other thing let's take a look at is let's just compare, uh, obviously it's a very tiny uh, tensor, uh, but we'll get the idea of the performance improvement by moving to online softmax. So, um, I should say fewer passes than eager. Um, so basically we're gonna do five iterations through the row versus uh, two iterations through the row. And let's just remove our print so that doesn't show up in the stats. And yeah, so now we've got our timing. So let's just take a look at that. All right, so the original one we wrote uh, is 0.04. The online softmax time is 0.01, so we can conclude that basically our new online softmax is almost four times as fast uh, as what we wrote earlier. So um, 
algorithmically more efficient, exact same results. So hope that helps uh, expand your understanding of Softmax and some of the algorithmic, algorithmic improvements uh, that are out there for it. So this is Online Softmax and I'll see you in the next video.